This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Hello and welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education public meeting for Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Happy New Year. First, please take note that Board Vice President Julian Gilbert and Board Members Christina Lee and Karen Hatch are attending this meeting via Facebook Live due to family commitments and potential COVID exposure situations. Due to the nature of Facebook Live, they can attend but cannot participate. To be clear, your full Board of Education is here tonight. We begin, we begin tonight's meeting with public participation. We have received advance notice that members of the Brighton community have feedback regarding the effectiveness of the COVID vaccine, jingle bells, and the proposed land acquisition adjacent to the Brighton High School grounds. So to review, public participation at our school board meeting is for members of the Board of Ed and school leadership to receive feedback on any issues of concern to the Brighton community. It is not set up as a forum for debate. Your Board of Education is responsible to review all feedback and discuss with school leadership. When appropriate, there will be written responses as follow-up to speakers. We do not tolerate personal attacks of any kind. We do not tolerate personal attacks of any kind. Diverse points of view are respected and needed, and the Brighton Believes values of integrity, respect, responsibility, kindness, and self-control are expected. We are role models for our students. Please let Dan Goldman know. Dan, could you raise your hand wherever you are? Back in the back there, thank you. Please let Dan Goldman know if you plan to speak and he will give you a card to fill out with your name and town so that you will be called when it is your turn. Street addresses are no longer required due to security concerns voiced by past speakers. Each speaker is allocated three minutes and I ask that you be mindful of your time. Regardless of our differing points of view, it is not that difficult to be civil to each other. Over the last couple of weeks, we've received voicemails and emails from anonymous sources that have included just some awful things. We've also received a lot of very respectful feedback with some disagreement on some policy decisions that we've made. In all, I'll say again, we are role models for our students and we can be civil to each other and have different opinions. Having said that, we'll open up public participation. Um, the first name I've got here on the card is Rogina Davis. I'll just make a quick comment, Rogina, before you start. I am gonna ask that everybody stay masked with the spikes we've seen with Omicron we're all going to remain masked. Typically, when we've had the opportunity, we've let speakers remove masks. We're going to ask that people keep their masks on. I'm sorry, Regina, go ahead. Okay, thank you. You made the national news with the Jingle Bell song, a song no longer being sung in the district because someone might be offended. Well, myself and many other parents are offended by this book and your decision to keep the book in the library, a book containing pornography by the very definition a definition that you disregarded in our meeting with four witnesses by saying pornography is an, in the eye of the beholder. A book containing sex acts does not belong in the school library. A book you said was only in the library and students wouldn't come across it accidentally. Yet it was photographed by a student on a shelf in a multi-use classroom. In your email about the Jingle Bell song, you wrote, if many, many songs are available to accomplish the same objective, why wouldn't we use those? I asked you the same question during our meeting. There are many, many books in the Brighton Library that accomplish answering questions on gender and more specific to this book, Gender Dysphoria, in a much better, more educational way than the book Gender Queer does. Finally, you said if there is ever a question if whether or not something might be ex experienced differently by someone else, shouldn't we respect, be respectful of that? Well, there are many parents, grandparents, students, and Brighton residents who feel differently than you do regarding this book, and we are being disrespected. Thank you for your feedback. 
Melanie Bernhardt. Hello, it's Melanie. I come every board meeting. Um, as long as the COVID update letters are put out, um, I will come up with an alternate perspective. Um, so I'm just going to read one paragraph from the letter that came out on the second. We continue to promote and support vaccination as a means to protect yourself and others. We also encourage anyone who can be boosted to do so. Currently, students to the 16 and over category who were fully vaccinated at least six months ago are eligible. Although the Omicron variant seems to be more easily spread, it appears as though those that are boosted are more likely to not get infected and if infected to experience less severe illness. Um, so what I'm gonna read is a letter from Dr. Robert Malone that supports a lot of parents, uh, teachers and taxpayers point of view here in Brighton. Um, I loved how he summed it up. He was recently on Joe Rogan. It's a three hour discussion. I highly encourage you to watch it. It's on Rumble. You're not gonna find it on Google, through Google um, or YouTube. Uh, it says, and this is a letter by Dr. Robert Malone. It says, my name is Robert Malone and I am speaking to you as a parent, grandparent, physician, and scientist. I don't usually read from a prepared speech, but this is so important I wanted to make sure I get every scientific fact and word correct. I stand by this statement with a career dedicated to vaccine research and development. I'm vaccinated for COVID and I'm generally pro-vaccination. I have devoted my entire career to developing safe and effective ways to prevent and treat disease, infectious diseases. After this, I will be posting the text of the statement so you can share it with your friends and family. Before you inject your child, a decision that is irreversible, I wanted to let you know the scientific facts about this genetic vaccine, which is based on the mRNA technology I created. There are three issues parents need to understand. First, the first is that the viral gene will be injected into your children's cells. The gene forces your child's body to make toxic spike proteins. These proteins often cause permanent damage in children's critical organs, including their brain and nervous system, their heart and blood vessels, including blood clots, their reproductive systems. And this vaccine can trigger, trigger fundamental changes to their immune system. The most alarming point about these, once these damages have occurred, they're irreparable. You can't fix the lesions in their brains. You can't repair the heart tissue scarring. You can't repair a genetically reset immune system. And the reproductive damage could alt affect future generations of your family. The second thing you need to know about is the fact that the novel technology has not been adequately tested. We need at least five years to re research and testing before we can actually understand the risks. Harms and risks from new medicines often become revealed many years later. Ask yourselves if you want your own children to be part of the most radical medical experiment in human history. One final point. The, reason they're give, the reasons they're giving you to vaccinate your child, or child is a lie. Your children represent no danger to their parents or grandparents. It's actually the opposite. Their immunity after getting COVID is critical to save your family if not the world from this disease. In summary, there is no benefits for your children or your family to be vaccinating your children against the small risks of the virus given the known health risks of the vaccine that as a parent, you and your children may have to live with for the rest of their lives. The risk benefit analysis isn't even close. As a parent, grandparent, my recommendation to you is to resist the fight to protect your children. And I'm just altering, offering that as a viewpoint of many parents, teachers, and, and taxpayers in the town of Brighton. And Larry did want to thank you. You did respond to my last comment. So thank you. Thank you. Next up, I have Karen Malecki, if I pronounced that correctly. Hello. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services authorized the use of the PCR test as a diagnostic tool for COVID-19 
which themselves are experimental products. Authorized by the FDA under separate emergency use authorization. A PCR test can only test for the presence of a fragment of the RNA of the, so, of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and literally by itself cannot be used to diagnose the COVID-19 disease. Further, the way which the PCR tests are administered guarantees an unacceptably high number of false positive results. Cycle threshold value is essentially the number of times that a sample, usually from a nasal swab, is magnified or amplified before a fragment of viral RNA is detected. The CT value is exponential, and so a 40 cycle thre threshold, which was formally recommended by the HHS, means that the sample is magnified about a trillion times. The higher the CT value, the less likely the detected fragment of viral RNA is intact, alive, and infectious. For several months, experts have highlighted the true cause behind the COVID-19 pandemic, namely the incorrect use of PCR tests set at a ridiculously high cycle count, which falsely labels healthy people as COVID-19 cases. As in reality, the PCR test is not a proper diagnostic test, although it was promoted as such. An important question that demands an answer is whether the experts at our federal health agency and the WHO were really too ignorant to understand the implication of using a test at excessive CT um, cycle threshold, or whether it's done on purpose to create the illusion of a dangerous out of control pandemic. On July 16, 2020, an interview discussed discussing PCR deficiencies with Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's spokesperson on COVID-19, stated that the PCR test is useless and unreliable for diagnosing COVID-19. On July 21st of this year, the CDC put out a lab alert and withdrew the PCR test because it cannot facilitate detection. A new test will be used starting in 2022 that will be able to differentiate between COVID-19 and the flu. There is currently no test for the Delta variant or the Omicron. So where is the data of these cases coming from? The faulty PCR test? The whole premise of PCR testing to diagnose COVID-19 is in serious question, as a practice appears to be based on erroneous paper that didn't even undergo peer review before being implemented worldwide. Regardless of those in charge, those in charge need to be held accountable. The German Corona Legal Inquiry Committee is in the process of launching an international class action lawsuit against those responsible for using fraudulent testing to engineer the appearance of a dangerous pandemic in order to imp implement economically devastating lockdowns around the world. Think about it for a minute. Testing non-symptomatic people makes no sense. Being tested to prove that you're healthy is like saying, saying guilty until proven innocent. We have a case demic, not a pandemic. Once you know the truth, you can't unknow it. Please do not be complicit in perpetuating the false narrative. These are crimes against humanity. What side of history do you want to be on? What do you want to tell your grandchildren? The Center for Disease Control and prevention will no longer recognize PCR tests as valid method of diagnosing COVID-19. The CDC announced a lab alert on its website that it will be withdrawing its standing request to the FDA to grant emergency use authorization for PCR tests to be used to detect, detect SARS-CoV-2. The request which was issued in February 2020 has been withdrawn as of December 31st, 2021, a move which signals that the CDC no longer approves of the use of PCR tests as valid diagnostic tools for COVID-19. Think about that for a second. Just how many false positive PCR tests were included as positive COVID cases? And how many people got vaccinated because of the fear that extreme numbers induced? And now our children? How many healthcare professionals were silenced? Think about it. This is worldwide. I could go on and on. I just hope you can hear me.
Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you. That was my last card, Dan. Is there anybody else out there? No? Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item number three is approval of tonight's agenda. Motion to approve that agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. No, that's all right. Um, I'm sorry. Before we approve the agenda, I apologize to both of you. I would like to ask um, uh, Kevin if you'd like to follow up on any of yep. those comments. I forgot you had mentioned that you wanted to do that, so I begin. No, 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 that's all right. Um, I think, though, there and there are many people here that, <clears throat> certainly including Council Rock staff members, that I think, uh, <clears throat> one, I would like to say I appreciate your attendance and uh, the reasons for your attendance uh, on a very heartfelt level, and thank you for that. Thank you for being the colleagues you are. Um, but I will say, because I think it's important for people to hear this message, and, and that there are many community members who watch this, they watch this after the fact, and students, frankly, who we know are watching too, who more than anybody need to hear this, because kids are watching, and they're listening, and they're thinking, and they're thinking about how they act and behave and engage as citizens. It's definitely been a disappointing moment for many people as educators, for me personally, as a citizen, a parent, as a colleague, and what really began as a simple inquiry from a community member about something on our website regarding diversity, equity, inclusion, and the curriculum that we use and how we teach, what we teach, became frankly a gotcha story. And it evolved then into an example, I think, of the profoundly divisive political and cultural war that grips our nation. What began, frankly, as one teacher's very thoughtful inquiry decision, and this is what I really want people to hear, thoughtful inquiry decision that is done each and every day by our staff members that we support entirely, and this needs to be heard over and over again, has turned into a ban of a holiday favorite, described as a ban of a holiday favorite because of some type of supposed proposed liberal overreach at the expense of children who are now being robbed of a tradition that is somehow so essential to their development that to take it away from them must mean you are a Nazi, or a communist, someone hateful of America who is destroying our nation, or far, far worse. Among the nearly 200 messages just received by me personally on this topic, but I will tell you Mr. Tappan, Dr. Rio have also received an exceptional number of messages. Uh, I can count on one hand, one hand, the number that were respectful, thoughtful, curious, or the least bit open to discussion, or in search of greater understanding. The vast majority were profane at best, hate-filled, and threatening at worst. It's unfortunate, I think, that we've lost, for sure, seemingly completely, our ability to respectfully disagree, to debate, to discuss, to find compromise. It's a sad, it is sad that many in this community fell for, I think, the low-hanging fruit, the dog whistle politics of the day, the quick shot. You better stand up for yourselves or they're going to take away everything you hold sacred, even if those things may offend or hurt others. That apparently shouldn't matter if it makes us feel good, makes us feel joyous about the season. So on this topic, I just want to make sure it's clear that I personally continue to, and I know many people in this room, without hesitation, without pause, without any concern whatsoever, support the work of our staff that we think is so critically important to analyze what they teach, how they teach using the lens of equity as an important, in fact, essential perspective for us always to consider. I further support finding balance in that work. I think that's important. I think that's something that certainly has been expressed and that we do talk about here internally. Making sure that we're not pushing one agenda over another, one political perspective over another, one idea as an absolute. I don't believe, though, that inclusivity and equity are political ideas that are being pushed. In fact, I think it's an insult to many that assume that equity is only the concern of one political party or one group. It's not politics, it's humanity, and I think in every way that should be apolitical. That should be a concern of anybody, whatever their registration or lack of registration might be. So I support, and I know we support here, debate, discussion, thoughtfulness, and seeking to understand as opposed to seeking to divide. So kudos to all of our staff members here and all of our staff members throughout the district who continue to do this work. Know that you're going to be supported and that we appreciate your courage and thoughtfulness. We will continue to let the educators educate. Let the professionals analyze what they teach and how they teach it, and then continue making decisions in the best interest of their students, as they always have. We want feedback in that. 
people should participate in that. We have committee volunteers throughout our curriculum review process, in our diversity equity work throughout the district, in our annual strategic plan. I challenge anybody to find a district that includes parents more in their child's education and the decisions that are made. But at the end of the day, we receive that feedback and we depend on experts to make decisions about the work that they're doing with kids that includes that feedback, that respects that feedback, but that makes the best decisions possible for our children in the work that they're doing each day. And we should make sure that we continue to have a rigorous process to support discernment and ensure that it's balanced, that it's thoughtful and it's responsive to the needs of students and standards, the standards that they're charged with meeting and frankly exceeding. With, regarding the, with regard to the Gender Queer book and its availability in our library, I would not support in any way, and I want to reiterate this again, its removal and will not re recommend such an action. Having heard since the last discussion of this from several students and adults in our community, and frankly would like to thank you for bringing it up because it has reminded us of how important it is to provide opportunities for young people to see themselves and their human experience in the materials that we are providing for them and giving them access to. I've never been more convinced, in fact, of the importance of this book and ones like it being available. The need for all children to see themselves in the materials and to understand they're not alone in their human experience, to find comfort, to find consolation, and hopefully pride in who they are and what they're experiencing is at the core of who we should be. There's a vast difference between use of curricular materials in a captive manner and making sure materials available to students who would benefit again as a human from relating to seeing themselves in the materials we have available. In other words, Jingle Bells being a captive experience, being used in curriculum that children would be singing as part of instruction, not by choice, but frankly by putting, being put in that lesson in that situation, as opposed to the opportunity to find yourselves and your human experience in the materials that are available in a high school library, which pale in comparison to what is available on the phone that's available to most students. I sense that there's no shortage of an opportunity for children to participate in singing songs that their family chooses that they sing outside of school. That literally was the decision of a teacher who said, you know what, this song doesn't feel right to me for reasons that I have been exposed to. I'm going to use one of many other hundreds of songs to accomplish the same objective. Nobody banned it. The use of the word banning in the literature was absolutely incendiary at best and intentional. It's unfortunate that we fell for it. It was a teacher saying, I can do better. I'm going to do something different. I think we should be awarding that instead of criticizing that. And finally, with regard to COVID, we're frustrated too. We'll do everything that we can to remain open for in-person instruction. I want to make sure people in our community hear that. Everything we can. We recognize how important that is. And we want people to be patient and show grace and we'll communicate clearly with people. They may have delayed bus runs. They may be asked actually to find a way to get their child to school because the bus will be so late if we are reduced in terms of our staffing or they will have to wait longer for food and our food service will be delayed or their classes will be covered differently things may be canceled we'll have to move people around but we want kids here we recognize the importance of that and that sense of normalcy we're going to analyze everything we do capacity events and keep people safe to the best of our ability we do support vaccinations and boosters most importantly at this point we'll enforce masking and not stand by misinformation that is costing people their health their livelihood, and in some cases, their lives. Dr. Malone, who's 61, claims to have invented mRNA vaccines when he was 28, 33 years ago. I'm surprised he couldn't find those five years for the further research. He's a well-known spreader of misinformation, to be very candid with you, and it's unfortunate that he continues to do so. I think it's dangerous. Matt Tappan, thank you for your leadership. Dr. Rio, thank you for your leadership. Lisa Button, countless other staff members that are doing this hard work and are courageous in it, again, should be recognized for that courage, for that thoughtfulness, for the way they are including and recognizing every human being in their experience. Kids are watching, everybody. The experience that many of us have had with social media lately, I can't imagine the pressure on children who are exposed to that same type of behavior that, frankly, we wouldn't tolerate if we knew about it in school. Yet it's been okay for adults. So kids are watching. I think we should think about that. Let's invite rigorous debate. Let's have discussion. But that doesn't mean we have to do it in some of the, the awful, hurtful ways that have been done. I think it's what we would want for our kids. We should want it for each other. So I wish for better in the new year, for everyone to stay focused on keeping each other well in every way by thinking about our impact, our intent, and our actions. So I appreciate the opportunity to respond, and uh, let's move on. Thank you. Appreciate words. Uh, for tonight's agenda, approval of the agenda. Let's start over again with that. 
So moved. Second. Moved by Susan, seconded by Andrea. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Approval of minutes from December, the December 14th business <coughs> meeting. We've all had a chance to review those minutes. Any changes, edits, corrections, additions to those minutes? Motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. Second. Moved by Andrea, seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the minutes are approved. Next up, I'm very excited to get an update through Lou Alimo and uh, the Brighton Buildings team and campus construction. The TCMS uh, facilities improvement plan update. Great work has been done over at that school and I'll take a tiny little bit of um, Lou's commentary, I'm sure. This is one of the many committees that we're all involved in that I get to participate in and it's impossible for me to emphasize to all of you as a community the great work that Rob Luce and John Novelli and the folks that they work with do for all of you, the way they watch your tax dollars at work, and the way we are able to apply their knowledge to get great solutions for learning spaces for our kids. So I uh, feel incredibly fortunate to work with those two guys, usually fortunate to work with Lou too, um, so all good from there, but Lou, I'm going to let you take it away. Good evening. So this is our fourth installment of the Facilities Improvement Plan update. And uh, as usual, I'm joined by our owners, architects, uh, construction management team. I'd just like to uh, recognize everyone here. Certainly we have John Novelli, District Supervisor of Custodial Operations. Rob Luce, our Buildings and Grounds Supervisor. In the second row here, we have Nikki Polito, our Project Manager. Bruce Snap, Principal at ME Engineering. David Hallmark, uh, Designer at SE, SEI. Excuse me. And we have Patrick Arrow with uh, Campus Construction. He was an addition to our, to our team this year. Vic Tomaselli, our principal at SEI. And Gary Huffman with um, Campus Construction. So this is our team. I'm proud to be a member of it. And I'll invite campus representatives up to take us through the, the presentation and highlight all the great work we achieved or accomplished. So, we'll go for no technological issues today. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you for having us again. Uh, as Lou said, this is our fourth. and. Uh, Final update on the construction project. Today we get to highlight the work that we did at 12 Corners Middle School. So I'd just like to take us through that. We did a bunch of different improvements here. Uh, mainly we did a full library renovation. We did a cafeteria renovation that included a new accessibility ramp and upgrades to the kitchen. We did an art room and science classroom renovation. We renovated the adaptive PE and fitness center area. We installed new lighting within the gymnasium. We put in a brand new PA system throughout the entire school. We also updated and put in a brand new fire alarm system throughout the entire school. We did multiple student bathroom renovations and we also did multiple locker room renovations to achieve ADA compliance within the bathroom areas as well as two locker rooms that we did a full renovation um, and changeover. <coughs> Some of the accomplishments that I think we had throughout this project, which were many, but here are some that I'd like to just highlight for you. We renovated the library to a more updated <coughs> facility to meet the needs and use of the space for now and into the future. What I mean by that is the traditional library, the card catalogs of yesteryear and all that stuff, <coughs> that's gone. The way that we are using these spaces has changed. And I think now you will find when you have a chance to go through the TCMS library that it will really allow our students uh, within the district to utilize the technology and the space much differently going forward. When we had a successful installation of the new fire alarm system, this upgraded a primary life safety system uh, to get the building um, to where we wanted it to be. We completed the cafeteria renovation and it beautified the space and it made it so much more accessible. Um, with the locker room renovations and the adaptive PE in the bathroom areas, we were able to make all of those <coughs> ADA compliant. And finally, we were able to complete the scope of this work through all of the COVID complications and supply chain issues and staffing concerns. I know we've said that in every presentation, but it has been a huge challenge and I am really happy that we're able to make it through. Finally, our, our challenges that we had on this project um, and, and there were many as well, but a couple just to highlight here. The kitchen cooler and freezer installation on this project 
Um, we had to do that probably three times. Um, no one wanted to, but it, it's what our commitment was to make sure that we got it right. There were some challenges that just occurred, um, you know, maybe some faulty items, but we did it three times to make sure that it was done correct, and now uh, the kitchen staff is very happy with what we have provided. Another challenge was the unknown that we find out about when doing construction that caused some delays in redesign. Um, we always want to stay on budget, we always want to stay on schedule, but sometimes things happen that are going to cause us to have to zig or zag, and uh, we did have some of that on this project as well. But luckily with working with the team that Lou has identified and with Lou um, and the district, Larry yourself as well, um, we were able to work through those and come up with some unique and interesting resolutions to keep everything moving forward. And finally, again, the challenge of working under COVID guidelines and restrictions. Um, the main thing is that all these challenges were overcome by having a lot of coordination meetings between campus, SEI, and the Brighton High School staff, in addition to some very accommodating contractors. Um, I'd also like to say accommodating staff within the school, um, the principal, the uh, head custodian, Dave Luce, um, and many other people who were involved specifically in TCMS. Um, it, I never heard the word no, uh, and, and I appreciated that you know, going through this. What I'd like to do now, um, I know you were going to do a walkthrough perhaps earlier today, but that did not happen. So for those of you that have not had a chance to see what we've done, we have put together a bit of a slideshow with some pictures so you can see some of the stuff. And I will offer out to you that pictures don't do it justice. So if you do get a chance, please go and take a look for yourself. The cafeteria. So in this space, we gave it a full facelift. Brand new floor, brand new ceiling, paint all around. Um, some new countertops throughout really came out beautiful just another look at some other uh, views in the cafeteria and you can see it made the the new line look beautiful over there the equipment all remained the same but it, it's amazing what some paint and new flooring and some new ceilings can do to a space in some cases new lighting i think yeah uh, <coughs> yes i'm sorry larry you're correct yeah. I, for I forgot about that yeah. new lighting as well this is one of the art rooms that we fully renovated. It was fully gutted. Room 436 and 438 were entirely gutted and redone. So this art space is now a whole lot more user friendly, a lot more room, tons of storage. Teachers were very excited about being able to display student projects and, and have space to actually put things while they're drying or curing or whatever it may be. Um, so this came out really nice. And this is the other room done very similarly and there is an adjoining office between these two rooms that both of the art teachers used that was also fully renovated simple bathroom renovation and we did oh i think about four to six bathrooms within tcms student bathrooms full full guts and and redid the entire thing we also upgraded the faculty lounge down on the the basement floor new flooring new lighting new ceiling new paint um, just to give teachers a, and staff a place to be able to take a break and, and, and feel comfortable. We put in some brand new lighting within the gymnasium. There's that dreaded kitchen freezer and cooler. Again, we got it right on the third time. It's there, it's working awesome, and has met the needs of the district. This is the accessibility ramp that was put in uh, to get down to the cafeteria area. Um, so that did help us with our ADA compliance. The library, I would like to say, uh, you know, no parent has a favorite child, or I guess they might, but you don't want to tell the children <laughs> which one is the favorite. I've presented three times now, and I want to say that this library is my favorite thing that we have done of the entire project, and hopefully the pictures will do it justice. But we gutted this down to floorboards, studs, redid the entire thing. <coughs> I'm just going to let you look at that for a second, because that is the wow. Um, I've done a lot of projects with campus and um, did a lot of work here. I don't have a picture that looks like this anywhere else. Um, and maybe we just took a great picture. Um, but not to be facetious, this space is phenomenal. And please, please, please go and check it out. But this is the, this is the spot that I am most proud of. And I know our librarian, Katie, is excited about it as well. This is a classroom that is off of the library, 
um, that is used by um, classes as they come in. There may be some faculty meetings in there, but this was also a full gut and added on to the uh, renovation of the library space. And then there is also a faculty workroom that is attached to this and it adjoins the library, and we did a full renovation in there as well. This is one of the locker rooms that we did an entire renovation on. Again, all the way down to the floor, redid the entire thing, brand new lighting, brand new floor, all these brand new lockers. And there are two locker rooms like this. They are pretty identical. They're on the ground floor. This is the adaptive PE area. So we renovated this entire space, put in brand new mats, the rubberized flooring. You can see a lot of the equipment is pushed up against the wall in this picture. New ceiling, new lighting, new paint fitness center, um, phenomenal fitness center. Uh, yeah, we were walking through it the other day and someone said, this is a middle school. What do they need that for? And I said, well, it's amazing what we can do here, what we can provide. You know, Brighton has a phenomenal facilities and a lot of the different teams do come over and utilize this space as well. It came out amazing. This is one of the upgraded science classrooms. Again, a full renovation, flooring, ceiling, countertops, furniture, technology. And that's it. I appreciate your time for indulging us over the last couple of months to go through four presentations of this. Again, I just want to echo Lou's sentiments. This was not a one-person show. I may be the mouthpiece up here, but there was a team that was with me, not even behind me, but with me, leading me, guiding me, um, and could not have done it without you. And again, we'd be remiss if we didn't thank Lou and Larry, um, who have been very instrumental in all of this. I and mean, I'd also just like to thank the board for allowing us to do what we do. Um, we have completed this project, and I will honestly say we are looking forward to many more with you, and we hope that you will have us back. So, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Nick. Beautiful. Again, kudos to everyone. We will get over there and get a tour. We just had a bunch on our plate here tonight, so we will get over there and do a walking tour and the extent to which all of you are available. We'd love to have you do that with us when we go. So, absolutely fine. Lou? No, I think you saw this was a great balance of design enhancements to our instructional space and then core infrastructure engineering uh, that went into this project. I just wanted to recognize what Nick uh, pointed out, but the teacher involvement that we had in designing this project, the library spaces, the art room spaces, the PE space, a uh, compliment to our teachers who we gave um, an influential voice in, in the design of this project, and to our architects for, for taking that feedback and putting together a great program. And certainly our um, TCMS administrators, their flexibility, uh, allowing us to work through difficult situations was very much appreciated. And again, just my compliments to our entire OACM team, Mr. Davis, uh, for your participation. Just really proud of the work we were able to achieve throughout this project. So thank you for the opportunity. So including Lou, there's nine uh, people. And, and if I rattle off other names, it's going to sound like the um, starting line of, of the Yankees. Again, so I, I'm not going to do that. Other than I'm going to say the first four that I want to mention are the four most humble people that will not love this, but I need to say it anyways. Larry on the on the committee and at all of the meetings your extensive background in this work has been essential on behalf of the board and taxpayers and that lens to think about how we spend what we spend and what we're doing and the effectiveness of that but you brought with it this expertise in your own professional background that was absolutely essential and, and appreciated uh, John and Rob it's John and Rob, John and Rob, John and Rob, throughout the whole district. Your leadership in these projects, but just the day-to-day, -day, the work that we're doing right now, and managing that during this period of time, right? Let's not forget, all of that was happening while these two are trying to figure out how we can remain open relative to COVID, how we can move furniture, how we can clean things. That's not something we've talked about in the other meetings. See, there was something else I had to say to you. I, I know I've thanked you in the other ones, but this huge undertaking of moving things all over the place, keeping it a safe environment for everybody, but just the leadership that you provided um, in, the, in the roles that you're in, I, I, I cannot say enough about that. And, and Lou, who's now hiding behind people, and your internal leadership of this work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You and me both, Lou. <laughs> Jump up and down behind John, and we still can't see each other. But uh, you know, your, your leadership in, in all matters, financial, administrative, buildings and grounds, uh, the capacity you provide us and the, the, the way you are committed to making sure that our staff has what they need to do what they need with our kids and that our kids have an environment that is so conducive to them, to them achieving the success that they do and the leadership you provide. Again, can't, can't say that enough times or thank you enough for that. And, and to our partners, Campus, Emony, 
HESI, thank you very much for all the work that you've done with us. Uh, so, so appreciated and, uh, and noted and great, great work. And the evidence clearly speaks for itself throughout the whole district. So love being your partners and appreciate that a great deal. Thanks. I'll just add one thing for, for John and Rob because I want to do this. John and Rob daily handle uh, requests, complaints, concerns from the teachers. And those are the two people that the teachers go to because they know they're going to get answers and they know they're going to get the straight skinny. And so I appreciate that sort of unseen role that they take on every day and make sure those voices get escalated. So I appreciate it very much. Okay, great work on TCMS. Up next is principal reports. As long as we're at TCMS looking at a great, great work product, we might as well hear from the TCMS principal. All right. <laughs> so as Danielle approaches the podium, I do want to point out that this is uh, in, in some ways, although the appointments are on the personnel agenda at our next meeting, her first official presentation as not the interim principal, but the principal of 12 Corners. Around the clock. <laughs> not to repeat the entire press release that went out, but after her extensive experience as a teacher and just incredible work as a leader here in different capacities over time and most recently as the interim. Danielle, we could not be happier uh, than we are to have you leading the middle school. So thank you for that and congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm just as happy to be here. Good. And um, just as happy, ironically enough, to follow that presentation because I stepped out of TCMS as the construction was starting and I walked back in as it finished. So it was like, Excellent timing. Great. It was perfect. We couldn't ask for anything more than that. No, really, I do hope that you get an opportunity to come over. I would love to walk around with you. Um, certainly the library is a focal attraction and it's beautiful and amazing things happen in there every single day, but you should check out that science classroom in real life and see what that looks like and the art rooms uh, and all the amazing things that are happening in those spaces. It's, it's really an awesome place to be and I couldn't be more excited to be there, um, not only because of what the building looks like, but for so many other reasons as well. So I will give you a quick update. December was a crazy month. Um, as I, I think I talked about last month, concert season started at the end of November and we had all of our groups able to perform their, their concerts, orchestra, band, uh, chorus, and our jazz band as well. And it was really neat, I think more so for our sixth graders. This is our sixth grade band up here. And um, that was our first concert in almost two years. So it was really cool to be able to see them live on stage at TCMS for the first time in so long. And they were amazing. They were fantastic. If you had an opportunity to catch the live stream, it's hard to believe that they hadn't done a live performance in so long. Um, our clubs were super busy. And our, what is really neat to start to see happening at our building is that our clubs are starting to dovetail with each other and work together. And so this was an example of where our Black Student Union and our school store clubs worked together in order to do a fundraiser. Um, they raised 400 pounds of food to uh, send to the Brighton Food Cupboard and they also made a donation of $400 as well. And that sleigh that you see there, Mr. Darling made himself. And um, it's hard to see, but it's made out of mostly candy and there's some other trinkets. <laughs> there's an iTunes gift card and all sorts of stuff there. And um, students either brought in a uh, food item or they wrote notes of kindness to be attached to the food that was brought to the food cupboard. And when they did that, they got a ticket for a drawing for this donation that um, Mr. Darling made. And this was our lucky winner. He was pretty excited to walk out of school the day before break with that. <laughs> so uh, continuing on with extracurriculars right now, we have 24 clubs up and running with great participation numbers. I think I've mentioned that each time because I'm still in awe of how many students are participating in our clubs every day after school. As you walk around, you can see at least 15 kids in, in so many classrooms engaging. Um, we actually have two more clubs starting up this month. We have um, our environmental club is starting up and our Muslim Student Union also met today for the first time. So all in all, we have over 400 of our students are participating in clubs and activities at TCMS, which is pretty wild. 
Basketball, uh, wrestling, swimming, and cheerleading are continuing, and we have over 100 students participating in athletics. This is our girls' modified basketball team, and they, um, they did a food collection for the Center for Youth just prior to break, and this is an example of um, all the things they were able to collect before actually donating it. We have visitations continuing um, with our seventh grade science group, and um, they also came in, the Shinchinum group came in to the Mosaic Club to present on Hanukkah as well. So um, this was kind of an interesting lab that the students were really engaged in. There were lots of things going on in those little beakers that you see happening there, um, more than I could ever explain to you, but you can see that all of our seventh graders were wildly engaged in the activities. Tinkering continues to happen in the library. It happens with library club, but it also happens daily as students come in for study hall. They have opportunities to engage in coding. This is with the Ozobox right now um, happening, and students just always have an opportunity, whether it be to do a puzzle or to engage in some sort of tinkering in our library. We're also pushing on our a Positive Postcards Home initiative, which is tied to the Brighton Five qualities, the Brighton Beliefs qualities, and so many of our students are, are getting these at home, and um, we're hearing from parents that it's, it's super nice, and families that it's super nice to just get a little note of recognition of what students are doing well each day. Looking at the month ahead, obviously we spent this week welcoming students back, so excited to see them all, talking a lot about health and safety, we'd be remiss if we weren't doing that. We're starting to prepare for computer-based testing. Um, we'll do a little test of our, our network system and our computer capacity in the coming weeks. We also have some celebrations around Martin Luther King Day that are going to spread into Black History Month as well. There'll be school-wide efforts. We will have our first, as, at least ever since I've been in the district, um, Scripps Spelling Bee for sixth graders at TCMS where students will compete and they'll have an opportunity to go on to regional competitions and who knows, maybe even down to Washington DC and be on ESPN. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll, we'll be watching for that with super excitement. Um, going along with our postcards that we're sending home, we're really kind of coming back to basics with Brighton Believes, you know, in initiating our Brighton Still Believes and our five qualities and developing common language in the building and moving some common lessons ahead along with that. We have COVID permitting junior high solo fest coming up later this month where we'll be hosting probably over 400 kids in our building, 60 of whom will be our own seventh and eighth graders. And our sixth graders are also preparing for their solo fest in Pittsburgh later this month as well. Program planning is beginning with our eighth graders moving on to ninth grade. I'm sure Dr. Hall will talk a little bit about that. And um, we're also meeting at the end of the month to start shifting our fifth graders into the mindset of what it's going to look like to be sixth graders in our building soon. So that's kind of all the news that's fit to print right now. Lots of ski and snowboard club coming up this month and um, some of the other things that I've talked about. The second marking period, most importantly, comes to an end at the end of this month as well. No shortage of activities. No, not at all, which is great. Any questions? Great. Great Thank you again. Congratulations Thank you. Uh, Principal Tappan, let's hear from you. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope everyone had a great holiday and a great break. So, um, one of the things I want to highlight that happened at Council Rock in December, um, we have a father, Dr. David Ehrenstein, who volunteered. He uh, was one of the NASA engineers who worked on the telescope that was launched into space. Uh, it was supposed to be the 21st, it ended up being the 24th due to weather. Um, and he presented to all of our Council Rock first graders, individually in each of their classes. He spent six days um, so many thanks to Dr. David Ehrenstein, Dad Decora, and Mrs. Allen's class. Um, he spent six days uh, as an engineer coming in and talking to first graders. All of this was orchestrated um, by Mrs. Yaman, who's here, our extended studies teacher. 
Um, he did an amazing job. Um, and then Mrs. Yam Yaman extended it, of course, and tied it to her extended studies where the kids had to actually, because he taught about how the telescope needed to be folded and then put into the space. So there was an activity for the kids to get hands on. It was so great. And I had just happened to watch it on 60 Minutes the uh, week before uh, learning about it. And then it tied right in. And then I've been watching all the updates. Um, our kids were so thoroughly engaged and really excited about it. And it was a really unique and wonderful opportunity. To, so again, thank you to him for volunteering his time. And thank you to Mrs. Yaman for organizing and, and having him there as a guest. The kids were super excited about it. So many of you volunteered, and we want to thank you as a Council Rock community. As we celebrated Stay in Your PJs and Read Day, it is absolutely one of the best days to be a Council Rock citizen. Every day is a good day, but it is just so fun. It's a great way to lead us. So we have Dr. McGowan there, Ms. Flores, who's here tonight, myself with the kindergarten class, and there's Dr. Rio. Many of you were there. I didn't get to get pictures of you because I was reading most of the That's day, fine. but we really appreciate <laughs> it, actually. Uh, it, was, it, was really, it was really awesome, and the kids engaged all day with guest readers as well as all kinds of reading activities. It keeps the line very nice and calm as we enter into the holiday, and it can be difficult to do that. So appreciation for the teachers and everybody who volunteered that day. So um, one of the things we've talked about within our diversity and equity lens is um, Second Steps is our social emotional curriculum that is led by our amazing counselors at Council Rock. Um, and we really looked at how to incorporate some learning for justice lessons. And one that we did school-wide um, recently is uh, a lesson that created a school-wide quilt. Um, so many thanks to our counselors, Kim Ball and Dana Peterson who helped to do that, but also our art teacher, uh, Mrs. Lisa Jordan, who um, helped to facilitate this. And really the goals for the lesson were to explore those concepts that we want all kids to be thinking about. What does it mean to be the same? What does it mean to be different? What do we have in common? What is unique to us? And what kind of celebrations can we do of those uniqueness? Um, and really helping kids to recognize that. And it is now very proudly, slowly going up um, with some painter's tape brought by John to make sure that we didn't peel any of the new paint off. Um, but it is up and being displayed in our front foyer uh, right outside of our library. And it is really great to see it go up. But then what's even better is to see the kids looking at it, reflecting on it, finding theirs, but then finding other people's, finding exactly what the goals of the lesson were, similarities and differences. Um, you know holidays that they celebrate that someone else celebrated while also saying, oh, I don't celebrate that holiday, but I know what that holiday is. And it really is a wonderful, wonderful way. Um, and it brought families in, and it brought um, culture and all kinds of wonderfulness. So um, again, kudos to them. Uh, we have a PTSA meeting with the principal planned uh, for next week, January 12th at 7 PM. It is going to be via Zoom. Um, and it really is uh, mental health and looking at mental health um, an overview of some of the district-wide initiatives that we've done for our Council Rock families. I know we've talked about it a lot here at the board meetings. Um, Betsy Paddock has come and shared and you know talked about those initiatives, but specifically for Council Rock. And then talking um, from our mental health uh, team, mental health support for our Council Rock students, what that social-emotional learning lessons are, um, the second step curriculum. And then really talking a little bit more about the personal body safety lessons. Um, I know that is a, con a topic that's being talked about, K-12, um, and what it looks like to be appropriate at each level and what is needed. Um, so our counselors will be there along with answering any questions um, about that mental health support. It's so important right now, and we're so so glad to have the district and the board um, support our, the needs of our kids. <laughs> Upcoming events, so we do have that meeting with the principal. No school on Monday, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Day. And then Thursday, uh, two Thursdays from now, uh, the 20th, is our incoming kindergarten information night. Um, much like uh, Danielle talked about kind of moving the programming forward, it's time for us to start to talk to our incoming kindergarten uh, families. We will be doing that at Council Rock right now, unless something changes. Um, we will also have that live streamed as well as taped for people who cannot make it or aren't feeling comfortable. But we are hoping to have people in uh, 7 p.m. have a chance to talk about uh, our amazing full day kindergarten program and what we have to offer and how we start to do the registration process for kindergarten. So 
that is it for tonight. Thank you very Thank much. You. Any Absolutely. questions for Principal Tappan? No? Thank you very much. How about Tom Hall? Oh. Sorry, Marin. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I get started, I, I just I want to give my thanks to the board, and, um, Kevin, and just for all that you do, especially in this last week with everything that went on. Um, it's 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 25 years in the district and. Just truly appreciate the support and uh, you know your level of passion in what you do and and you know doing the job you know for not a lot of money so <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. thanks Tom um, we are home of the Bruins and again the Bruin change I saw some of those emails too 25 years that was one of the best decisions I feel that was made um, I really enjoy having the Bruin and we're getting excited because uh, Nate Marin and I are finally narrowing down a mascot um, costume and um, <laughs> does it fit you like okay <laughs> good we actually have a, a fan in there application for uh, prepared for students to complete <laughs> if they're interested in being in the mascot costume and cool. there's gonna be tryouts um, <laughs> would a board member like to make a motion for Tom Hall to be in the mascot costume? <laughs> I will not get in the suit that's gonna be students I think at the high school you know I did the purple bear at French Road but uh, um, this is beyond me so the kids I think are gonna be excited we've been talking up a little bit but as soon as we can get that in the works, you're going to see it. And another, you know, historical thing for me, working with Drosophila flies, um, if you were ever in any biology class, this is one of the most studied organisms in all of science in terms of genetics. Um, and we, we do this lab at the, in, the, in the AP biology classrooms. Um, I'm not sure if the region's kids work with it um, as much, but they might get a chance just to, to sex the different flies in terms of determining males or females. But um, I think through AP Biology, you know, I did this lab, but it's come even a long ways from there. But this particular fly, if any of our students are going off to college, they're probably going to be working with this, and they learn how to anesthetize it and um, study it and, you know, do all sorts of other experiments. But it's one of the most studied. And I was just happened to be walking into the labs when they were doing that <laughs> one. So these are the, also the fruit flies that you'll see. And just so happens we start to see a few more fruit flies in the building during this time, so <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Crossroads, so they did not have their annual trip to Syracuse University um, to, for the press awards, but they did do an online version. And Crossroads yearbook, uh, they called it Retrospect. It was the best overall yearbook in New York State, oh. even during COVID. Woo. So congratulations to them. Hard work. Uh, I talked about this last time that we had an opportunity, thanks to Nicole Vandermeen in the food service, we, the, the high school won. I swear I did not click the, the link to make us win. I think the kids did. I don't know. Maybe Rob did. Um, but we had, a, we had two things that we won from, from clicking on the link for you know, reading about the American Dairy Association, a virtual farm tour, which there were several students there. Um, and that was exciting for me, you know, coming from the farm area. but. The Zoom call with the Buffalo Bills uh, tackle Harrison Phillips was really exciting. That was that day. You see, actually, Robert right down there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and there's Harrison Phillips. And I, you know, honestly, I've never met the man, and he was great, entertaining, um, and he does a lot of community service. And we talked about that too. Um, but he just answered their questions. It was really fun, um, and it was during a flex time. It was one of our first actually events where we actually had a speaker. And, and students in the, in the large group room, which is brand new. So, um, this con continues to be our mission statement at the high school. We want everybody to feel safe, welcome, cared about, professional, be in a professional uh, environment free of harassment. And our CCLT continues to meet. We meet at least once a month with all of these different groups, bringing in their particular insights and experiences, lived experiences in many of the groups. And our subcommittees are moving strong. We'll have some data to share on our culture climate survey. Our sexual misconduct uh, education committee met with our health teachers. They gave a presentation on what we do for sex ed at the high school and really did a phenomenal job. John Feltis and Aaron, um, Dwyer. Dwyer. Aaron Dwyer, sorry, Aaron, Aaron Dwyer and John Feltis did a phenomenal job, answered questions where, you know, some of the kids come up with some really good questions. Our student policy committee with Ms. Mosier and our multicultural colleagues <coughs> Edwards. So moving right along, we'll have some evidence to share with you later. I can't tell you how great it is to be able to have <coughs> the therapy docs back in the building. 
um, because we didn't have them when we were in hybrid mode, you know, still figuring things out with them. But there are so many kids who utilize these therapy dogs on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible. And again, I, I support the board for, and Kevin for allowing us to, to start this uh, project, and it's, it's been phenomenal. <laughs> it was one of the faculty meetings. We had one faculty <laughs> meeting in the auditorium this year right before break, and I was wondering why people were laughing, and I was like, what did I do? Did I sneeze at myself? And there was Lily walking behind me on the auditorium. <laughs> We had our class at 2020 reunion. It was a little bit small, but a great group of kids. They actually, the thing they wanted, they wanted a tour of the building and see all the new facilities. So we had a, we had a good time right before break. Program planning is um, underway at the high school here until the end of January. Something brand new that came out of COVID, our, our counselors, instead of meeting with a group of 15 to 18 students, they're actually setting up individual meetings. So 1,227 students will be meeting one-on-one -on -one with their counselor sometime between now and um, the end of January and into February for those kids who didn't uh, make it. But they'll be meeting for those one-on-one -on -one meetings. And talk about time involved, but they found it to be so useful and the kids found it to be so useful. And uh, so that's, we're continuing that now. And we'll probably continue that. Co new course of studies online and um, we'll be figuring out staffing and what courses we're offering into March. The AP <coughs> Family Night for the class of 2026 is coming up on the 27th. Right now, it's an in-person event. We'll probably be well. We'll be streaming it live anyway, so we'll see. It's still going to be in person, but uh, we'll see how things go for the next few weeks. Um, our goals and initiatives for the high school here. I'm looking at for a future report. Put that in there so you can see it. Um, and right now. The five day a week schooling program and implementing a successful week, again, we're, we, we're hoping that we are moving in a really good direction with that. And our teachers really want to stay in school, just like the kids. So again, I think that sums it up. We are on all this together and hope everybody has a great New Year. Another great update, questions from the board. Yeah. Just a comment. I took some time as my high school mascot as a Mid Lakes Eagle. So if you ever like want any tips or to compare notes, let me let me know. <laughs> we will have a panel to judge. Excellent. So we will have you come over for that. Actually, right. not at all surprised. Oh, that. that does not surprise me. That is awesome. Panel selection committee. We got our board member. <laughs> Thanks, Tom, for your kind words. Yeah. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you for your patience, Maria. Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Saving the best for last. It's good to see everybody. Hope you all had a good New Year. Um, let's see. Let's get into this here. All right. So we are moving at full steam over at French Road. And similar to what Danielle showed, um, we really had some wonderful performances in the month of December. Even just as special as the students being able to perform for their parents, um, caregivers, and family members. They were able to share those performances with their peers in school too, which was just really cool to see that same but different excitement um, for them to be able to play in front of their classmates and to have students um, enjoy that. So uh, the first round of performances, we had all of our fifth graders as um, audience members and we'll continue through the other um, grade levels as the performances continue throughout the spring. Um, as I move around the building, uh, prior to the break, I had the pleasure of observing in quite a few classrooms, and it just so happened that to align with this Facing Challenges unit, and I was just really struck by um, the moves that some of our teachers, all of our teachers, I should say, are making as far as acknowledging the different experiences and viewpoints that students in front of them are bringing to the classroom each day. The conversations that I was able to listen in on, be a part of, um, and observe were really just a testament to their work and to the great knowledge base and experience that our students bring with them. So it was just such a pleasure to be part of these lessons. Um, the work is throughout the building. Um, and it was great, you know, as part of the unit, students are able to choose a common novel and they're grouped up and they're able to work through that book. And just to kind of be throughout the building, seeing kids working together, reading in groups, talking about text. It just gives you that great feeling as you're moving throughout the building. So something um, may not seem as significant, but really feels great when you're part of the school that way. Uh, our extended studies program is led by Mrs. Weedor. 
and the first group of students uh, were able to engage in several projects and many of them took an environmental issue or scenario and then were able to work as a part of a small group with other students to decide how they wanted to um, you know become activists in uh, solving things like the great um, pollution issues in the ocean and I had a fifth grader who stumbled across something called Team C's and it actually uh, was something pretty big on, on social media with our that fifth grade age group and so uh, we did a little bit of research and we ended up taking it on as a building and um, this group actually ended up um, removing close their goal was to remove 30 million pounds of trash from the ocean by December 31st and uh, or January 1st I should say and so they came they're, they're they came close to that I clipped this prior to the break but our students at French Road were able to raise four hundred and sixty three dollars and students were um, eager to be part of the announcements and to be talking about this. And they, we had family members hopping on with the hashtag on the Team C's website uh, to show support for students. And this was truly something that was student led and driven and really connected nicely with the other projects that we had going on in the building as well. Coming up later this month, we're really excited to host author Peter Brown uh, on January 21st and 22nd. It will be a virtual author visit and he's the author of some really wonderful books um, that are pretty familiar to our students, The Wild Robot and The Wild Robot Escapes. And so our wonderful PTSA is supporting us in this venture and we can't wait to host him. We have some exciting things coming up. Uh, next week we'll be hosting a parent information night uh, in partnership with the Center for Missing and Exploited Children. It'll be part of their NetSmarts curriculum where we're just kind of gonna take a few steps back and review those very basics to digital citizenship for our students as we enter the second half of the year in relation to our use with iPads and technology in school and out of school. So we're gonna start out with a parent information night and then student, um, students will receive presentations by grade level throughout the week. Uh, we'll also be having our student math team information meeting with Mrs. Widor on January 11th. Oh, I'm sorry, that was moved to February 4th. I apologize, I wanted to note that because that went out in the previous communication. There will be no school on Martin Luther King Jr. Day and we have our fourth grade chorus concert that will be on the 19th, so we're looking forward to that. And then, as I mentioned, our author visit later in the month on the 21st and 22nd. Great. Thanks. Questions for French Road? Oh, no. Great job, Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Sometimes if there's a question regarding the work we do and the purpose of the work we do, um, we just heard from four people the answer to that question. Next up, approval of the second reading uh, policies. We looked at these, was it two meetings ago? Uh, last, meeting. Last, meeting. Last, meeting. Last, meeting. last meeting. While these will seem pro forma in, um, in sort of form and format, these are incredibly important and you'll see that by the names. I'll read each one and then we'll pass them as a subject of the whole. First is policy 6110, personnel, code of ethics for board members and all district personnel. B, policy 6121, personnel, sexual harassment in the workplace. C, policy 7550, students, dignity for all students. Any questions or comments based on either the first or the second read? A motion to approve the three policies as stated. So moved. Second. Moved by Susan, uh, seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Second reads are approved. Uh, finally, uh, approval for um, of election workers for the January 25th special vote regarding the land acquisition next to the high school. This is a, a normal step taken prior to any uh, vote. Um, it's noted that we utilize the Board of Election Workers for these events, so it is a paid function for these folks. Questions in regards to approval of election workers? Motion to approve? So moved. Second. Moved by Esther, seconded by Andrea. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, before we adjourn, any other comments or questions you would like to ask? No. Board members? No, thank you. No. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Susan? Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.